Once upon a time, in a faraway land lived a prince. It was now time for the prince to wed, but unfortunately, his princess was nowhere to be found. In order to find his princess, he travelled all around the world. All the princesses in the neighbouring kingdoms visited the king's castle to meet the prince. But the prince was having a hard time trying to pick the right one. His father the king wanted his son to wed a real princess. After trying for so many years, he lost all hope in finding the right princess. Sad, hopeless and deep in his thoughts, the prince continued to live his life. The king and queen were indeed very sad at this situation. Another sad night, as he sat there thinking, a big storm began. Lightning was striking and the sound of the thunder was echoing in the castle. The prince was having a hard time trying to sleep as he watched the lightning strike from his window. But on the other hand, he couldn't help but think about his future princess. Amongst all the noise in the castle, one of the servants realised that the door was knocking. She opened the door and noticed a shivering young girl that was drenched from the rain. Amongst the state the poor young girl was in, she still looked very beautiful and elegant, and with great difficulty she spoke. Will you take me in, please? I'm all alone. I got lost in the woods. The servant felt sorry for her, and so she ran and gave the news to the king and queen. We cannot refuse to take in a visitor at this hour of the night. Take her in. The king quickly let the guards know of the situation and ordered them. The guards took the girl in the castle's living room and sat her in front of the fireplace. Seeing the girl's clothes drenched in water, the queen ordered the servants so that they bring some appropriate clothing for the girl. All alone with the girl, the queen asked, At this hour and in this weather, may I ask what it is that you're looking for? I'm a princess from a faraway land. My castle has been attacked by my enemies. In order to protect me, Mother and father secretly sent me away with two soldiers, but once it was midnight, due to the storm, we lost each other, and here I am. I found your castle. Thank you so much for taking me in. The queen found it hard to believe, but even so found it harder to send her away from the castle. The prince was curious to see who this mysterious girl was, he wanted to meet her. At that point, the girl was wearing the dress the queen had given her. Her hair had dried and she was feeling more like herself now. Now that she looked much more elegant and beautiful, as the prince entered the room, he couldn't believe the beauty and elegance and was mesmerized by her presence. But still, he wanted to know for sure that she was indeed a princess. The queen told the prince that she was going to handle the situation and find out if she was a real princess. Is she a real princess? We will find out tonight. The prince and princess chatted away the whole night. The prince, as fond as he was of this girl, he was trying to get to know her better. The queen got the guest's room ready for the young girl and she placed a pea under her bed and covered it with seven mattresses. The young girl slept in this strange bed that was prepared for her that night. The following morning, the queen waited for the young girl to wake up, and when she did, she asked her, 
Did you sleep well last night? I'm very fortunate that you gave me shelter, but I had great difficulty trying to sleep. Oh, really? I wonder why. May I ask why? My body is in pain. My back aches. It was as if the whole night I had slept on something really hard. This is the exact answer the Queen was looking for. She knew that only a princess could feel such discomfort coming through a bed covered in seven layers of mattresses. <sighs> she went next to the prince and explained all that happened. Hearing all of this and finally knowing that she was a real princess, the prince couldn't hide his happiness. He told the king that he would like to wed the princess and so the king accepted his son's offer to marry the princess. The prince asked that the princess stay in his castle for a few more days until the war was over in her kingdom. In fact, he sent out his own troops to help save her country. And soon later, the prince proposed to the princess. Will you marry me, my princess? And as soon as he got his answer, they lived happily ever after. That night, the prince put the pea in a glass box and made sure it got exhibited in the best corner of the castle. For many years, the pea got visits from people who believed in real love. The prince and the princess's story went on being told for many, many years. Once upon a time in a land far, far away lived an amazingly beautiful girl. Cinderella's mother had passed away a very long time ago. This is why her father had brought her up. One day when Cinderella's father remarried, her life had changed dramatically. Her father's new wife and her two stepsisters had moved to Cinderella's house. Since the first time they met, her stepmother couldn't stand the sight of Cinderella. She and her two daughters were extremely jealous of Cinderella's beauty and kind heart. Cinderella's stepsisters were not beautiful as she was. And besides, they were rude and spoilt. One day, due to work reasons, Cinderella's father had to leave on a long journey. And that was the time when Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters turned her life into a living hell. While Cinderella was in the garden talking to her very beloved birds, her stepmother approached her. As of today, you will live in the attic. You will do all the housework. Also, I don't want you walking around in these clothes. Cinderella didn't know what to say. Helplessly, she did what she was told. She packed her stuff and moved to the attic. After that day, Cinderella began to do all the housework all on her own. She used to get very tired, but neither her stepmother all her stepsisters felt sorry for her. Wipe the floor again. Can't you see it's still dusty? You haven't done the laundry. I have nothing proper to wear. Cinderella had no friends other than the mice and the birds that used to come to her window. Due to the cold, secretly at night time, Cinderella would go downstairs to the chimney and warm up near the dying fire and fall asleep. As the days went on by, one day in the town, an announcement was made by the kingdom. Our prince will be holding a ball at the castle. All the girls who are eligible for marriage are invited to this ball. As soon as the stepsisters heard about this invitation, they ran home and told their mother. 
You will be the most beautiful girls at the ball. The prince must pick one of you. That way we will all live in the palace, right, mother? We must get some gowns and shoes for you girls. Move along, we're going shopping. The stepmother and stepsisters left the house. Hearing all that was talked about, with a sad face, Cinderella stood there and watched. The preparations went on for days. Both the stepsisters had their gowns sewn. Every day they would go in front of the mirror and tell themselves, we will be the most beautiful girls in the ball. Finally, the big day had arrived. The stepsisters had woken up very early that morning and so they called Cinderella. Cinderella, Cinderella, hurry and come here. Where have you been? Hurry and prepare our bath. All day, Cinderella helped her stepsisters get ready. Ah, hey, brush it gently. You're going to pull it out. Towards the evening, they had finished all their preparations for the ball. You look beautiful, girls. Just beautiful. Cinderella built up all her courage and asked her stepmother. Can I come to the ball too, please? Who, you? Yes, well, it says that all the young girls can come. And <laughs> <laughs> this your dress for the ball? The prince is looking for a wife, not for a maid, my dear. <laughs> come on, girls, let's not be late for the ball. And you make sure that you've finished all the chores before you go to bed. Her stepmother and her stepsisters made their way to the castle. And all on her own at home, Cinderella began to cry. <laughs> Why can't I go to the castle too? If my parents were here, none of this would have happened. <sighs> right at that moment, a very bright light appeared. At first, Cinderella did not understand what it was. She was staring at the light. Then suddenly, a beautiful fairy appeared in the middle of the light. My beautiful Cinderella, don't cry. You too will go to the ball at the castle. Cinderella could not believe her eyes. She asked in shock. Can I go? Just look at me. Do not worry. I'm here to help you. Now bring me a pumpkin and seven mice. Cinderella could not understand why she wanted these things, but still she did as she was told. First, she went to the kitchen and grabbed a big pumpkin. Then she went to the attic, got her mice friends and went down again. With her magic wand, the fairy turned the pumpkin into a beautiful horse carriage. Then she turned to the mice, one of them turned into the driver, and the other six of them turned into beautiful white horses. Amazed as she was, Cinderella was looking at the horse carriage. The fairy turned to her. When she touched her with the magic wand, Cinderella's old dress turned into a beautiful ball gown. And the slippers on her feet turned into beautiful glass shoes. I look like a princess. Now it is time to go to the ball. But don't forget, you must be home when the clock strikes 12. Because by then everything will turn back to what they were. Cinderella listened to the fairy very carefully. Then she hopped on her carriage and started to ride towards the castle. Her mesmerizing carriage stopped in front of the castle. When Cinderella entered through the grand doors to the ballroom, all the eyes were on her. She looked so beautiful and elegant. Her stepmother and even her stepsisters could not stop looking at this beautiful lady. They, of course, could not recognize her. 
Suddenly, the prince appeared on the stairs. Cinderella really stood out amongst all the young women at the ball. The prince fell in love with the first sight of this beautiful young woman. With everyone watching curiously, he began walking down the stairs and slowly approached her. The stepsisters were very excited because the prince was coming towards them. Ah, he's coming to me. Now he's coming to me. But the prince passed on by and stopped in front of Cinderella. Most beautiful young lady, would you please allow this dance to me? Cinderella nodded politely. The prince and Cinderella began to dance amongst the curious looks of all the invitees. Cinderella was so captivated by the music and the dance, she felt like as if she and the prince were the only ones in the ballroom. They danced non-stop all night long. Of course, Cinderella could not feel how time had passed. At some point, the big clock caught her eye. It was almost midnight. Right at that moment, Cinderella remembered the fairy's warning. He must be home when the clock strikes twelve. Because by then everything will turn back to what they were. With a panic, Cinderella began to run and left the prince behind. When she was running down the stairs of the castle, she dropped one of her shoes, but she did not even have time to go back and collect it. When she ran further, the clock struck midnight and everything turned back to what they were before. When the prince went out after her, he spotted her shoe on the stairs. Find the owner of this shoe, even if you have to get all the girls in the kingdom to try it. Just find her. Cinderella came home breathless and went straight up to the attic. She started thinking about the night she had with the prince. She knew she had no chance, but still, she had fallen in love with him. It was almost impossible for the prince to find her, and even if he did, he would never recognize her. The prince's men went door to door to every house in the kingdom and looked for the young girl who owned this shoe. The shoe did not fit any of these girls. In the end, the prince's men came by Cinderella's house. Cinderella was very happy to see the king's carriage in front of the house. Right when she was about to leave her room, her stepmother appeared at the door. And where do you think you are going? You want to try the shoe too? <laughs> With a sarcastic laugh, the stepmother locked the door to the attic. No, please stop. Open the door, please. How pathetic. What would the prince have in common with you? The men first let the old skinny sister try the shoe, but it was too small for her feet. Look how beautifully it fit my foot. Then the younger chubby sister tried the shoe, but her chubby foot did not even get in the shoe. Maybe if we tried it on my other foot? Whatever they did, it just would not work. Finally, Cinderella's last try was to run to the window, but it was too high. So she began crying. <laughs> Seeing her crying, her mice friends came next to her. My stepmom locked me in. She must have the key. One of the mice slipped underneath the door and ran downstairs. The stepmother was at the door with the prince's men. Um, why don't you come tomorrow? Today they are a little tired. Their feet must be swollen. 
The mouse jumped on the stepmother's skirt and snatching the keys out of her pocket, ran upstairs. He slipped the keys under the door. Cinderella was very happy when she saw the key. Opening the door, she ran down as fast as she could. Uh, how did you get out? Please stop, don't go. I want to try the shoe too. The stepmother and her two daughters started to laugh hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> Please shush. It is the prince's orders that every girl in the kingdom must try the shoe. When Cinderella tried the shoe on, everybody was in shock because it fitted her perfectly. Young lady, are you the owner of this shoe? Cinderella nodded to confirm. Please come to the palace with us. Cinderella went to the castle with the prince's men and they took her in front of the prince. Right when he looked in her eyes, the prince knew it was her who danced with him that night. He held her hands. I finally found you, my princess. Would you marry me? With teary eyes from happiness, she accepted the prince's offer. They got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, they lived a king who had 12 beautiful daughters. These 12 princesses lived all together in a big, beautiful room. The king protected his daughters with his heart. And when they went to bed at night time, he did not allow them to go out. But every morning, they would wake up to something very strange. The shoes of the princesses would all be worn out as if they had danced all night long. The king had to buy his daughters new shoes every day. But the following days after, the shoes just kept wearing out. Neither the king nor his men in the castle could solve the mystery of the shoes. How is this even possible? How can a pair of shoes worn out like that in just one night? Your Highness, we can't understand. Finally, the king said, Whoever solves the mystery of my daughter's shoes will get to marry whichever daughter of mine he chooses, become my son-in-law, and get to be the king when I pass away. But he has three days and three nights to solve it. Otherwise, he will spend his life in prison. Many young men in the kingdom and even princes from other kingdoms came to the castle for the job. For days they guarded the door of the 12 princesses' bedroom. But after some time, none of them could solve the mystery. And shoes continued to wear out by the night. Finally, a good-hearted young man also wanted to give it a shot. And so he made his way to the castle. On his way, he met a lanky old lady who looked very poor. My dear child, I'm very hungry. Would you be kind enough to give me a piece of bread? The young man gave all the food he had in his bag to the old lady. She was very happy because the previous men who had passed didn't give anything. The old woman knew that this one was different than the others. So, in return, she gave him a magic cape. Take this magic cape. When you wear it, you will be invisible. When it strikes 12 o'clock at night, put the cape on, be invisible, and get in the princess's room. This way you can solve the mystery of the shoes. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. No, oh, those nasty princesses. <laughs> the young man took the magic cape and went to the castle. And when he arrived, he said that he was there to solve the mystery of the shoes. 
First day, when he was keeping guard in front of the princess's room, the oldest princess came out with a glass of lemonade. You must be thirsty. We have prepared some lemonade for you. Please, have some. The young man forgot about the old lady's warning and drank it. Soon after, he was very sleepy. He fell asleep, snoring all night in the room that they had prepared for him. When it was morning, the young man stood up in a panic. I was supposed to wear the magic cape and get in the princess's room. On the second night, the young man once again kept guard in front of the princess's room. This time, another princess came out with a glass of juice in her hand. The young man was so thirsty while keeping guard and waiting for the nightfall. Without thinking, he drank all the juice that had been given to him. And of course, dozed off once again. The next morning when he woke up, he finally remembered the old lady's words. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. There must be a sleeping pill in the drinks the princesses give me. At that moment, the king came next to him. Two days have gone by and you still haven't solved the mystery of the shoes. If you cannot do it today, you will end up in prison and stay there for the rest of your life. The king finished his talk and went away. The young man had to solve this mystery today. That night, for the last time, the young man kept guard in front of the princess's door. This time, the youngest princess came out with an orange juice in her hand. But the young man was aware now. He took the glass, thanking the princess, and when the princess left, he poured the orange juice in a pot next to him. This time round, he was standing tall. The night fell and soon it was midnight. The young man put his cape on and at that moment became invisible. Slowly he opened the door and could not believe what he was seeing. All of the princesses were wearing their most beautiful ball gowns, hair and makeup done with their very new shoes. Let's see if the young man at the door has fallen asleep. One of the princesses opened the door and looked outside. And another princess put her ear on the wall. At that moment, the young man knew that he had to make some snoring noises. The oldest princess pushed her bed aside and clapped her hands three times. A secret passage opened in the place of the bed. The young man could not believe his eyes. One by one, all the princesses walked inside. And of course, the young man followed. The secret passage was opening to a stairway which had hundreds of steps going down. When they were going down the stairs, at one point, the young man accidentally stepped on one of the princess's skirts. Oh, somebody stepped on my skirt. Oh, nonsense. It was probably you. When the stairs had finished, they came into a forest. They went past tall trees with beautiful silver branches. The young man took a branch and kept following the princesses. After another long walk, they stopped on the edge of a river. In the river, there were 12 boats in the shape of swans, and in them, there were 12 princes waiting for the princesses. They got on the boats, and the young man got on the last one. The boat seems heavier than usual today, as if another person is on it. Strange. Oh, come on, stop dreaming. When they crossed the river, they came across a big shiny castle and they could hear music coming from inside. When he looked through the window, the young man saw many people dancing. 
As soon as they entered the castle, the princesses started to dance. They would never get tired and just kept on dancing. Of course, their shoes started to wear out. The young man could not bear his hunger anymore. So he took a slice of cake on the table and started to eat. The youngest princess saw this. Hey, my cake! My cake is floating as if someone invisible is eating it! Come on, stop it with this nonsense! The young man took a golden cup from the table without anyone noticing. The princesses danced till the morning. Then they got on the boats, crossed the river, walked through the forest, walked up the very long staircase and finally they came back to their castle. But their shoes were all worn out once again. The young man was very happy that he had finally solved the mystery of the worn out shoes. A while later, the king came next to the young man. Your time is up today. Did you solve the mystery of the shoes? Yes, your highness, I did. And so he told him everything. The king didn't believe him at first. But when the young man showed him the silver branch from the forest and the golden cup from the shining castle, the king knew he was telling the truth. And so he kept his promise and granted him the right to marry whichever princess he chose. The young man said that he wanted to marry the youngest one. The twelve dancing princesses were clearly not happy because their secret was out now. But the young man and the youngest princess got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a very rich man. He had three daughters. Two of them were really greedy and self-centered girls. But the third one had a heart full of love and kindness. One day, their dad received the news that his ships had sunk due to the storm. Poor man had lost everything and was left with only his little house in the village. The two greedy sisters were of course not pleased with this situation. This all day long, we all they were shopping? doing was sitting around and complaining. All the housework was left to beauty. After a while, their father heard that one of his lost ships had made it to the harbor. He started to prepare to go to the harbor right away. And before he left, he asked his daughters, Girls, what would you like me to bring back with me? A necklace, Dress, shoes, oh, bracelet, shoes, necklace, and a bracelet, and... And what about you, Beauty? What would you like? Just a rose is fine, Daddy. Their father arrived at the harbor after a long journey, but neither his stuff on the boat was there, nor was the ship usable. Oh, Sad boat. and tired, he started his journey back home. It was almost dark when he reached Ooh, the forest. So cold. The forest was dark and cold, and it was snowing. He rode his horse for hours and hours on the snow. And finally, he saw a castle with the lights on. Hello? Hello? He entered, hoping they might help Hello? him. It was a weird castle. Hello? The lights were on everywhere. The dinner table was full of food. And there was fire in the chimney. Anybody home? But there was no one to be seen. He called out Can for someone, but me? no one answered. Finally, not being able to wait anymore, he first ate some food from the table, and then he slept mm. in one of the beds. When he woke up in the morning, he found some new clothes next oh. to the bed. Oh. Hmm. He went downstairs, <clears throat> and that wow. nice breakfast was breakfast. waiting for him on the table. I can't believe I'm being helped like this. Must be a fairy that owns this castle. 
I wish I could thank her. When he was leaving the castle, he noticed oh. the rose garden. Hmm. Couldn't grant my other daughter's wishes, but at least I can get beauty a rose, like she asked. Just as he picked a rose, he and his surroundings <laughs> shook with a loud roar. An evil lion-like beast appeared from behind the trees. The father almost fainted when he saw the beast. I saved your life. I fed you. I gave you new clothes. No, and here you are, stealing. No, no. My roses. Is this how you think? Thank me. The man went on his knees and was, begged was him. He wanted I'm to sorry. take one of the roses no. to his daughter. What you did will not go unpunished. Please forgive me. I will forgive I you. I wanted it for my daughter. With only one condition. Talk to your daughters. If one of them agrees to live here with me, I will grant your life. The man jumped on his horse and sadly went on the oh. road to his home. Oh. When at oh, home, the man told his daughters about the lost cargo, the broken boat, and the beast in the castle. But the two greedy sisters were more worried about missing their gifts than about their father. Daddy, if you allow me, I accept to go to the beast. Oh, beauty. The two sisters did not want to go near the beast, so they immediately said that Beauty should be the one to go. You wouldn't even be in this mess if it weren't for her asking for a stupid rose. Sad and hopeless, her father took Beauty and left to the castle. When they arrived, everything was prepared for them, just like before. Food on the table, and no one else around. Just as they sat down and started to eat, the beast came out. Beauty the beast. started to shake out of fear because the beast was as scary as her father had told her. Beast asked with a soft voice, Did you come here of your own free will? Yes. Then in the morning, your father will go away and never come back. When she woke up in the morning, Beauty knew that her father was gone, and she found a nice breakfast waiting for her on the table. She wandered around in the garden for a while. She felt sad when she looked at the roses. Then she went around in the castle. One of the doors was full of roses. She wondered. She opened the door and peeked inside. The room was decorated just like she would have liked it. And it was full of books, flowers, and musical instruments. She thought that someone who can arrange a room like this would not hurt anybody. Then she took a book. On the book was written in gold letters. My dear queen, your wish is my command. <laughs> I wish I could see my father now. As soon as Beauty said it, her father appeared in the mirror across the room. Beauty was so surprised. Seeing her father made her happy again. That night at dinner, Beast appeared again. Would you let me watch you, Beauty? You own the place. Why would you ask me? No, you own this castle now. If you want, I can leave immediately. Beauty was very surprised with his answer. I want to ask you something. Do you really think I'm ugly? Beauty did not know what to say at first, but looked up at him and nodded as if to say yes. Do you think anyone would ever marry me? No, Beauty was shocked at the question, 
and answered too harshly. Beast turned around sad and left Beauty alone. Beast was visiting Beauty every night at dinner, and he treated her very kind. As days passed, Beauty felt like she was getting used to Beast. I wish he wasn't that ugly. As the months passed, Beauty was no longer afraid of the Beast, and she even started to like him. But one day, she saw in the mirror that her father was ill. She raced next to the Beast and asked him to let her go home because she wanted to take care of her sick father. Of course you can go, but if you don't come back, I might die from sadness. I will come back after a week, I promise. Take this ring and bring it with you. Beast gave Beauty a ring when she would put this ring on her nightstand and fall asleep, she would wake back up in the castle. The next morning, she woke up in her own bed in her father's house. She ran to her father at once. Oh, beauty. When her father saw her, oh, he was yes, so beauty. happy that he felt better. In the afternoon, Beauty's sisters, who recently had gotten married, came to visit their father. When they found Beauty at home, they were furious with envy and anger, and they decided to play a little trick on her. Let's make her stay here one more week. Then the Beast will come and kill her. The two sisters came next to Beauty crying and told her that they didn't want to be apart. Beauty promised to stay one more week. Not long after, Beauty realized that she missed Beast. One day, she saw a dream where Beast was lifeless on the ground in the garden's castle. She woke up in a sweat. What I'm doing is cruel and selfish. So she immediately took the ring off her finger, put it on the nightstand beside her. And she woke up in the Beast's castle in the morning. She waited for the beast all day long, but he was nowhere to be seen. She waited for hours and hours, but beast did not come. Suddenly, she remembered her dream and ran to the garden. Beast was lying down, lifeless on the ground, just like she saw him in her dream. Beauty ran next to him and hugged him. Beast's heart was still beating. He could barely open his eyes, and he spoke with great difficulty. I thought you weren't coming back. But I love you, and I want to marry you. At that instant, something magical happened. Suddenly, the castle became brighter and more beautiful. Beauty looked around, stunned. And then she turned her head back to the beast. But where the ugly beast was lying, now there was a young and handsome prince. When she saw him, Beauty started to cry. Who are you? And where did the beast go? Oh, do not be prince afraid. Prince stood up and started to tell. I am the beast, an evil witch put a spell on me and turned me into that wretched form. If it were not for your love, that you would marry me. If it were not for your love, I would have been a beast forever. When she heard this, Beauty was Thank much happier. So much. With her good heart, she found true love. Beauty and the Prince got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful castle in a land far, far away. In this magnificent castle, there lived the most beautiful queen. The queen only had one wish to be happy, and that was to have a beautiful baby girl. A cold winter day, when the queen was sewing next to the window, she suddenly poked herself with a needle. She immediately wiped the blood off with a piece of cotton, and right at that moment, she made a wish. 
wish to have a baby girl whose skin is as white as snow, whose eyes are brighter than the shiniest jewel, and has cherry red lips, and a heart full of joy and happiness. And one day, the wish of the good-hearted queen came true. She had a beautiful baby girl. They named this beautiful girl Snow White. The years went by quickly, but their happiness did not last long. The good-hearted queen had become ill and soon after passed away. After a while, the king aged and had become extremely weak, so he remarried another woman. The new queen was beautiful all right, but she had an evil heart. She was an arrogant and jealous woman. Every day, the queen would look into her magic mirror and ask this question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And the magic mirror would answer back. No one, your highness. You are the most beautiful one. And the queen would be very happy with the answer. With the arrival of the evil queen, everything in the castle started to change. Because of her evil doings, the kingdom faced many, many troubles. So to fix the troubles, the king had to go away from the castle. The evil queen was very happy because now that the queen had gone away, she could do as she pleased. The years went by fast and Snow White grew up to be a beautiful young girl. In a place not too far away, a prince suddenly saw the reflection of Snow White on the river from which he was drinking some water. He immediately looked around but could not see anyone else other than the birds upon his head. One day, the queen was in front of her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? The mirror answered. Well, um, sorry but none you, my dear queen. Snow White is the most beautiful one. The queen was furious when she heard the magic mirror's answer. She immediately called in her favorite hunter and gave a horrible order. You will take Snow White into the woods and bring me her heart. The soldiers took Snow White next to the queen. <laughs> Welcome, Snow White. Thought that you might have been bored in the castle. Um, go get some fresh air in the woods. Don't worry, my most trusted hunter will keep you safe. The hunter took Snow White deep into the woods. He had to do what he was told by the Queen. But seeing Snow White's pure heart, full of goodness, the hunter could not do her any harm. He warned her not to go back to the castle ever again. And at sunset, he left her in the woods and head back to the castle. Snow White was very afraid in the dark woods all alone. She sat under a tree and started <laughs> crying. Until, at last, she fell asleep. Morning, Snow White woke up with birds chirping and many tiny, tiny animal friends surrounded her. Because these animals knew who she was and loved their princess, they showed the way to Snow White. They brought her to their home, which was cute and as tiny as them. A little hesitant, Snow White opened the door. Everything inside the house was very small and extremely messy. Snow White could not figure out whom this house belonged to, but she did not have anywhere else to go, so she decided to tidy up. La, 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 la,
After she cleaned up the house and made it nice and spotless, Snow White cooked with the small kitchen utensils and had something to eat. In this small house, just like everything else, the birds were also tiny. But Snow White was so tired, she almost fell asleep right where she was. She thought that no harm would come to her in this place and fell asleep on a couple of beds she put together. In the evening, the seven dwarfs, who were the lovely owners of this beautiful home, had arrived from working in the mine. And as they entered, they were really surprised. The house was clean, plus it smelled of delicious food. Clumsy wanted some soup, but because of his clumsiness, he spilled it on the floor. Ace was trying to figure out what was going on. There is something fishy about all this. Who did all this work? <sighs> if I can get sleep, I'm sure I can find all the answers, said Lazy, yawning. The seven dwarfs quietly all went upstairs. When they entered the bedroom, they couldn't believe their eyes. There was the most beautiful girl they had ever seen lying on their tiny beds. Hearing the sounds, Snow White jumped up frightened from her sleep as she saw the 14 eyes of the seven dwarfs staring at her. Finally, with some hesitation, she said, My name is Snow White. I'm really sorry if I have offended you. I meant no harm. Well, we are sure of that. Otherwise, why would you clean up and cook for us? Answered Ace and introduced them. We are the Seven Dwarfs. This is Jolly, Angry, Clumsy, Slumpy, Red, and me, Ace, and... and... There he is, Lazy. Shh! <laughs> <laughs> Snow White was so happy that now she had seven more fun friends. Snow White told them all about what had happened. The seven dwarfs were really sad to hear what had happened. They asked her to stay with them. Agreeing to stay with them, Snow White always helped them out. They all started to have happy and peaceful times together, but their happiness wasn't going to last long. One day, the Queen asked the same question to her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? The mirror's answer was the same. Well, hmm, I'm sorry but not you, my dear Queen. Snow White is the fairest of them all. But the Queen thought that she was already dead. She did not know that the heart the hunter had brought her actually belonged to a deer and decided to finish the job herself, and for good this time. It was another joyous morning in the Seven Dwarfs' house. Snow White was sending the dwarfs to work with a kiss on their cheek. Ace repeated his warnings as always. Do not forget our rule. If any stranger comes knocking on the door when we are not home, do not answer it. Okie dokie, Ace. But you guys, don't be late, okay? While Snow White was preparing dinner, there was a knock on the door. She did not expect the dwarfs to come back home at this hour. Who is it? Ace? Is it you guys? From outside, an old woman spoke. I mean no harm, my little girl. Open up, please. Looking through the peephole, Snow White saw the poor old woman outside and thought she could mean no harm to her, so she opened the door. Oh, my dear beautiful girl, I am a poor old woman passing by. If you could give me a bowl of soup, I will be forever grateful. Snow White took the old lady in and offered her a bowl of hot soup. Thank you, my dear. I have no money, but I have the most delicious and brightest red apple for you. Even one bite will taste like heaven. 
Snow White curiously took a bite from the apple. And as soon as she did, she fainted and fell down on the floor. The old lady was no other than the disguised evil queen. And the apple was far from heaven, but full of poison. Even one bite was enough to put Snow White to a sleep, from which she could never be able to wake up. <laughs> when the seven dwarfs returned home, they found Snow White lying on the floor. Ace found the apple with the bite mark. The apple she ate must be poisonous. This must be the queen's doing. Snow White was so beautiful, even asleep. The dwarfs put her in a glass box made of the most precious gems and they put her on a hilltop where all her friends in the woods could see. One day, the prince came to the woods where Snow White was sleeping. Snow White's friends showed him the way and brought him next to the glass box where she was sleeping. The prince could not believe his eyes. The beautiful princess he once saw as a reflection on the river and kept seeing in his dreams was lying right in front of him. He lifted up the cover of the box and kissed Snow White. Right at that moment, Snow White's and the prince's dreams came true. Their love overcame the curse and Snow White opened her eyes. At that same time, finding out about all that had happened to his daughter, the king broke the magic mirror and sent the queen as far away from the castle as possible. Snow White finally returned to her castle and reunited with her father. Snow White and the Prince had a magical wedding. The King, Snow White, the Prince and the Seven Dwarfs, they all lived happily ever after.